Okay? So let's take a look at applying some of this Laplace transform stuff uh, that we learned. Alright, so this is, uh, we'll say videotape lecture number one. Let's see how many of these we can do. Alright, so if you remember, if we go back to the original problem we talked about before, right before we started talking about Laplace transforms, we had this RLC network. If you remember, I've got some input voltage. It's a function of T. I've got a resistor, inductor, a capacitor. Y'all might want to measure V out across here. I do have current that is a function of time. And if you remember, I did the Kirchhoff's uh, KVL, where and it turned out to be V of T equals R I of T plus L D I D T plus one over C I D T. Hopefully you can read that okay. Let's see if this lights. Doing a very good job. Which way is better? That's without the light. Might be a little bit better. So now instead of trying to solve this, right, we can move it into the frequency domain by taking the Laplace transform of everything. V of T just becomes V of S. Laplace transform of a constant R. R I of T is just I of S plus L. Now remember, one of the theorems, formulas that we showed, see if I can look it up in the book here, the differentiation. So for this, remember that the Laplace transform of dfs of t, dt, equals s times f of s minus f of zero. So in this case, we would have S times the Laplace transform of the current minus I of zero. And that, right, that's the initial stored current in that inductor, the initial conditions on the inductor. Going around, then we got the capacitor. I've got one over C. And if you remember this, we had the, the Laplace transform of, let's see, f of tau, d tau, was f of s over s. So this becomes i of s over s. And let's say, we'll say that the, uh, let's say that this initial condition here is zero. And then we're going to solve, let's solve this for I of S. So I'm going to try to group all my I's together. Got one here, one here, one here. I've got V of S equals R plus L S plus one over C S times I of S. Um, to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna multiply both sides by C of S. So I'm gonna get C times S times V of S equals R times C times S plus L C S squared plus one I of S. Divide both sides by this. I'll get I of S. I was trying to figure out the current in this thing. Equals uh let's 
see. Uh, it's going to be v of s times c s divided by l c s squared plus r c s plus 1. All right, so, and then if you wanted to find out I of t, you would just take the inverse Laplace transform of this thing. So that's the question. What's the, um, how do you do that? How do you go, we were able to kind of do all this algebraically, kind of getting rid of the calculus. So now the question is, how do we go back to the time domain? You know, I want to figure out, well, what is, you know, what is I of t equal? You know, you remember that we looked at the initial and final value theorem uh, today, actually. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not to apply the initial value theorem. But that's one thing you could look at. You may be able to say, okay, well, I can tell what, what the current looked like at time zero or what the current looks like at time infinity. And remember the one thing to pay attention to for the final value theorem, what I of t is when t approaches infinity, is the poles of this, that is the roots of this equation, the poles have to be on the open left half plane, otherwise you can't apply it. Okay, so this is um, one example of, um, of why you need this stuff. And I'll go pause this just for a second.